Hi, today we're here at Lemnos Labs. I'm here with Matt from Matterfab, which is a metal 3D printing startup. So tell me about that, like how metal 3D printing is different from you know, usual plastic 3D printing. Sure. Uh, metal 3D printing, instead of uh, extruding uh, plastic filament, for example, we take metal powder and spread a really thin layer over a metal build plate, come up with a high power laser and melt that metal powder, essentially welding it to the layer beneath it. So we still build up layer by layer, just like in the standard plastic 3D printing, we just do it out of metal. Okay. And how did you get started uh, building this machine? Sure. I, I actually uh, I grew up in a CNC machine shop. Uh, my dad owns one in Indianapolis, makes uh, aerospace parts. And uh, about three years ago, we noticed that uh, GE started printing some of the parts that he used to make. So we got to see this transition from uh, metal 3D printing starting to take over traditional manufacturing techniques. And that kind of spurred us to develop a new metal 3D printer at a, an order of magnitude lower price point that would be accessible to really everybody. Okay, so tell me uh, about how you uh, got started, how you started to build the machine itself. I started about two years ago, did a, a minimum viable test uh, with a uh, rather low power laser uh, that I got off eBay okay. and proved that I could melt metal powder with it, uh, melted uh, stainless steel, bronze, and uh, lit titanium on fire. So that was a fun experience <laughs> to go through. Okay, and um, w why is it able to, or why are you able to lower the cost so much with this machine as opposed to some of the machines that are out there already? There's been, over the last about two decades, uh, an incredible trend where really high precision sensors have dropped in price tremendously. Uh, the computational power has become incredibly cheap, and a lot of the other really core components for a metal 3D printer have dropped in price and become a lot more available to everybody. So we took that foundation and with our experience at Sandia National Labs and working on some really complex military systems, we're able to uh, pull about a dozen engineering disciplines together to create a, a metal 3D printer at a much lower price point. Okay, and tell me about the team working on this right now. Well, my co-founder is uh, Dave Warren. We actually worked at the, the same military base in Indiana, uh, but we met through the startup community in, in Indiana. And about uh, a little over a year ago, we came out to join Lemnos Labs. And out here, we've brought on a mechanical engineer with a lot of uh, system design experience, uh, an embedded programmer to really help us pull the system together. And uh, recently, we brought on a mathematician uh, that has a lot of experience in advanced manufacturing techniques at Boeing. Okay. Um, and when's it actually going to be available? Um, when are you going to start shipping this? We're actually going to start shipping uh, some test units out to some of our, some of our test partners early next year and use that process to kind of refine the system before we look at uh, nailing down a launch date. Okay. And what are some of the applications, things that you could build with this or things that your test partners are going to build? Sure. It, when you look at metal 3D printing, you've got a lot more kind of breadth uh, than you have with plastic printing. If you look at some of the, the examples in industry, uh, SpaceX recently uh, started printing their uh, Super Draco rocket engine on a metal 3D printer. Uh, they looked at other manufacturing techniques and simply couldn't do it. So metal 3D printing just gave them uh, a, just a completely new tool set to make uh, their engine. Uh, GE has started printing uh, parts for their jet engines, uh, the Leap engine coming out in 2016. So they're entering production uh, shortly with that. And there's a lot of other incredible applications that you can do with metal because you now have the strength to make functional parts. Okay, cool. So let's take a look at the machine. Absolutely. We've got a few of our uh, early prints out here right now. So about uh, a couple months back in April, we successfully printed our first 3D object, really uh, demonstrating the ability to weld metal to the layer below, which is not an easy thing to do. The next thing we did, we printed five objects at once. You can see uh, a drastic improvement in quality, uh, but it's still the prints are definitely not perfect. Uh, so we went through a, a series of tests to dial in the, the parameters of the system, how we need to print to improve the quality. And this is actually what we printed last night. So we've got the, the TC logo right here, and we uh, polished up the top so it has a nice contrast. Okay, so you've got this machine in this big container. Why is that? Yes. Well, we use a, a very high power laser in this process. And depending on what we're doing, we want to make sure that everybody is safe. So we can close the system, the uh, container, uh, make sure it's, it's light tight, and we've got uh, laser safety goggles and all the other laser safety equipment so we can run everything safely. 
Okay. And generally, what's the cost of uh, an object, depending <coughs> on the size? Uh, it, it is definitely very size dependent. Um, metal powder, for example, stainless steel, which is mainly what we work with right now, costs about $120 a kilogram. So it really depends on how big that object is, how much it weighs. Okay. Well, so this is your first prototype. How long would it take you to actually build another one of these mm -hmm. um, to ship out to partners? Sure. Uh, designing it is going to take the longest time, uh, but actually building it once we have the pieces is actually pretty quick. Uh, so we can actually we actually assembled this unit probably uh, in a week. Um, so it, it goes together pretty pretty fast. Uh, one of the, the things that we have to do though is keep the entire process sealed. So unlike a lot of the plastic 3D printers where you can easily see what's going on inside, because of one, the high, uh, high power laser, we get, we've got to protect everybody. You don't want to go blind uh, by looking at this. Uh, the other thing we have to do though is keep the environment inert. So we don't want any oxygen in there that would mess with the, the metal powder and make the welds bad. So what we've done is put several cameras in the system. This is how we monitor uh, the printer in process. Well, good luck with it. I uh, look forward to seeing what you do with it. Well, hopefully we'll have some uh, uh, more things coming out of the machine real soon.